five minutes before doors open, so I get a text from Anthony, hey, Kumba Johnny's passed out in the lobby right now, heading to the hospital to make sure he's okay. He's unconscious. How is everybody doing? This is episode two of the Wooden Spoon Podcast, The Sit Down. We are here with the one and only Anthony Rodia and the one and only Goomba Johnny. We're backstage right now, homemade Italian comedy night in Buffalo, and getting ready to rock and roll soon. Yep. So the one and only Goomba Johnny. I mean, I this is your mother's pizza, right? That's my mom's pizza, yeah. Nine out of ten, maybe nine and a half. It's a good score. Good. That's yeah. a real good score. Oh, really, good. A real good score. Yep. Really good. That's very good. Well, yeah, well, we're not like a Barstool's no. pizzeria no. Uh, review place. It's not a Portnoy score? No, no, no. Oh, it's an Italian. That do, I, I love him, Yeah. but you he's got to bring like an Italian with him to judge pizza. Yeah. You can't like, be not Italian. That's like me judging Chinese food. I mean, and our rules is not one bite, it's one pie. Right. One pie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't have one, one bite. Pie. <laughs> if something tastes so good, we can have one bite. I know. I'm trying to think if he's even had any Italian. No. Yes, no. Well, he had one guy in a Bronx. Uh, yeah, he gets that was the, with him. The characters there are so funny. Like the pizza yeah. owners, those are the those are the guys. Yeah, he does a great job. Yeah, no, I, I love the reviews. Yeah. We just bring an Italian with you once in a while. I'm thinking about doing something like that around Buffalo. Yeah, why not? Yeah, something like that. So you guys ready for the show? Yeah, ready to rock and roll. I hope so. Just in the falls, how'd that go for you? Niagara was awesome. Yuck yucks in Niagara was awesome. Uh, we're gonna be back there soon. Next month, November 21st, I'm in Toronto. Again with Goomba. So, uh, yeah, man, I love this area. Canada, you know, is first this, time in Buffalo. This is your first time in Buffalo Yeah, ever? performing, yeah. Yeah, what have, have you been to the Falls ever? Yeah, I was at the Falls when I was a kid. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of those guys that I'll go see the Falls for two minutes. Like, we went yeah. out to breakfast, Her. and the Falls are right, right there. And I was like, all right, it's out of my system. You know, some <laughs> people are like, I want to feel the mist on my face. I'm like, no, I'm good. Uh, I'll eat my eggs while I'm looking at the Falls. Yeah, it's fun. The Falls is good, but then when you get in the outskirts, it's a little... Yeah. So sketchy. Yeah, no, I'm not an outskirts guy. Yeah. I'll stay in Niagara, then I'll go to Toronto. I like to stay in the big <laughs> cities. Like, I'm not going to go sightseeing around Buffalo tonight. No. I'm just going to stick uh, stick to here and the hotel. Mm -hmm. We're excited to be back in the States. Yeah? Yes, uh, Canadians are... Uh, now, I heard on your Insta story you got stopped at the border. Is that... No. You got to just playing around no, with it's everybody? Probably, it's, a, it's a private joke. Yeah. They're, they're like, this is what you have to say. And uh, he was making, he had the driver almost having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of heart attacks, uh, you want to tell everybody about yeah, the heart attack? Yeah, they gave me a heart attack oh, was great. five minutes before doors open. So I get a text from Anthony, hey, Kumba Johnny's passed out in the lobby right now, heading to the hospital to make sure he's okay. He's unconscious. Yeah, he's <laughs> unconscious. He's, he's, not wake, he's not waking up. He's in the Uber and he's like, why has it always got to be me? I'm like, I can't pass out. I'm the one texting. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's always got to be me. Yeah, yeah, so I had a nice heart attack. Yeah, tried tradition. Figure. Tradition. I made a miraculous recovery. Yeah, well, lucky to have him. I put a little holy yeah. water on his forehead and he jumped up. Yeah. So when you, guys, when you guys travel together, is it just like this shits? is the first time we travel together? Oh, it's the first time we travel together. So has it been like shits and giggles for like the whole week? We a lot of ball breaking. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of times that I look at him and I'm like he's gonna punch you right in my throat. <laughs> but like I, I, everyone's like, so how is it with Goomba? I go honestly, hands down. Goomba is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Like I listened to him growing up on the radio, mm -hmm. so to 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 kind of register the fact that I'm working with him is kind of mind-boggling. But then when you get past the sentimental stuff, it's it's like having an uncle that yeah. just doesn't have a filter that you you want to kind of abandon, but then you can't because he's your uncle. As soon as you walk away, <laughs> that's awesome. You, you guys, here. I mean, you guys have such a great chemistry, and it's perfect for the show we're throwing. It. Like, it's Mark, absolutely, we yeah. So. First time I did a show with him, I listened to the crowd, and uh, I said, this is, this is, he said it today. He, he said, everything is going so smooth, and so many good things happening, that it's almost scary, because it's almost like I have to set a stop once yeah. more. But when I heard him on stage for the first time, and then I, I got, I always listen to the responses, the mm -hmm. feedback, when mm -hmm. people say, we're always gonna make people laugh, yeah. you know, hopefully. But I, I, like you'll see after the show, I know if I did a good show, or if we did a good show, by the response after the show. How many people stick around to actually meet us, take yeah. pictures? And uh, the feedback has been insane. So he brings that second generation American Italian, and then I come after him with the first generation off the boat Italian. And I mean, if, if you're if you're an Italian, you're gonna fall in love with our show. Mm -hmm. If you're anything else, and you, you understand, like 
you said your grandparents were off the boat. Yeah. If you have some form of off the boat family members, whether you're Italian or Argentinian or white, mm -hmm. black, Spanish, Portuguese, whatever you are, yeah. you'll you'll relate to it. But and, it's, and it's and you hear my mom dying the other day with um, your talking about your dad protesting with you. Uh, just some of the, the phrases that you use, like I could see it in my mom's face, it strikes that one nerve and she's in tears uh, instantly. So yeah. it's awesome. And for a lot of people, sometimes they had a neighbor, you know, that yeah. was yeah. first generation. And uh, you know, they had to, you know, they had to deal with all the, uh, the stuff that we dealt with growing up. Well, I had an Amer I had, I was a kid, Mike, Amer American, American kid. And uh, he calls me up one day and he's like, hey man, these people bought a, a house next door to me. And they're, they're, they've got to be relatives of your dad. <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, man, you got to come over. So I come over to the house and say, look, 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 look what he's doing. I look out the window, the guy's watering the concrete. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, what? He's like, why would you water the sidewalk? I'm like, well, he, he obviously wants to preserve the cement. I don't know my father does. <laughs> I go, what makes you think they're relatives? He goes, he does the same stuff your dad does. And uh, I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? He goes, hey, what's up? I go, you water the cement? You got to preserve. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I'm like, where are you from? He goes, Sicily. I go, yeah, no, you're not related to me. But uh, it's it, like he, if you have a neighbor, you have a relative, yeah. you're, you're related. It's almost funny to see because um, I got people because I'll go to the Italian festival. They'll be like, oh my god, you got hit with the wooden spoon too, and they don't even realize that it's like multi. It's like it goes. No, just like, <coughs> listen, when, right. I, <coughs> when I decided to get back into comedy, I uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know where I wanted, like who I wanted to attack or approach. <coughs> and then um, I've got so many stories, but. I felt like they were my stories. I didn't know how people were gonna react. And after the shows, man, people are in tears. They're like, you know, I listen to your. One thing is, no one knows what to expect with me because I don't really put a lot of stand up online, mm -hmm. but my, my characters are online. Yeah. So everyone's like, is he gonna do his characters on stage? And I give you a whole separate, like a whole separate form of comedy, stand up. It's mm -hmm. nothing, no characters. And um, when I started doing it, it's amazing how many people are like, Dude, I, I felt like you were in my house. Yeah. Like, and then you realize how many people were brought up the same way. The broom, the belt, the shoe. The you know, the, the infamous count to three. And you knew at three, you were dead. Yeah. Um, it's it's amazing to know that. Uh, yeah, let's take it a step back, though, because like when I when we were just talking about it, like I see you as like a businessman almost first before mm -hmm. comedy, and it's like the importance of going into like your niche. Yeah. And like attacking that with like everything you've got, and see it pays dividends. Well, I, I did a year of, of research, mm -hmm. uh, social media research before I even got into. It. I didn't want to jump into it blind, so I understood social media. I, there was time slots, but again, you could be as consistent as you want if you're not touching base or touching home with a specific um, you know a specific crowd mm -hmm. and relating to them I write humor and I don't even worry about relate uh, being funny I worry about how relatable it is mm -hmm. um, but it, it's a business I mean I'm, I'm my own business I, you know, sure. I have to make myself grow and put myself out there and the timing's right yeah uh, Italian comedy has you know I've been doing it for a long time and we were in the back seat for yeah. many many years and not taken seriously and now you know, thanks to people like Sebastian, uh, Italian comedy is relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's opened the doors for people like you, yeah, for Wooden Spoon and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, the timing of you know Anthony's rise, uh, it was just the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. You know, him getting back into comedy, um, using social media, and it, everything just. Yeah, it's weird because it's like you think like this would have taken over like when The Sopranos was big or anything. No. There's been like nothing like big pop culture wise. My, my family hates The Sopranos. Yeah. No. You get a lot of off the boat first generation Italians that I loved it because mm -hmm. it was a show. I looked at it as a show. Yeah. They look at it as a portrayal of Italians yeah. and that's where they don't like it. So you you don't really get The Sopranos to appeal to them. But um, listen, I, when I researched it, there's 18 and a half million Italians in the U.S. That doesn't even count Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada is Canada's packed with Italian. Ca not only packed, but they're so cultural. Yes, a lot of a lot more of them speak Italian, and they're raised the old school way. In but Toronto, there's sections. So if you go to Toronto, correct. Woodbridge is the Woodbridge section. is, is yeah. insane. Yeah. Woodbridge is like the Brooklyn of New York. Yeah, and they kept the traditions. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, when I did my research, I not only were there 18 and a half million Italians in this country, but the Italian culture is one of the very few cultures that are still growing. Because if you look at it, especially old school Italian upbringing. You usually marry an Italian, mm -hmm. and then, but even if you don't, I mean, I have a friend of mine that's Italian and Portuguese, but no one says he's Portuguese. No, like he's Italian. Yeah, you know, same thing with you. you My know? mother was Polish, mm -hmm. 
and they sat me down when I was 16 and they said, uh, we have to tell you something. And I thought they were going to say I was adopted and they said, no, well, we have to let you know that you're Polish. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God, I, didn't know. <laughs> I couldn't sleep for a week. <laughs> yeah, your mother's Polish. Uh, but it, was, but it wasn't spoken about. Well, no, you know, and, and you know, well, I lived in the Bronx, I grew up in the Bronx, mm -hmm. and I was in a four story walk up, 16 apartments, 15 of the people were Italian, yeah. and they all spoke it. Mm -hmm. But my generation, um, they wouldn't let us learn Italian, they want us to, to Americanize. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wasn't able to learn. I didn't learn the language because I was told not to. Well, my mom would yell at my dad when he spoke Italian. So my mom lost her accent. Um, she came here when she was 13 in school here. Mm -hmm. My dad's accent somehow got worse. <laughs> and he would speak Italian. She would yell at him because she didn't want us to get so used to speaking Italian. Like I had friends that were born here and going through high school, they had an accent. Yeah. And she didn't want that because she didn't want, you know, she wanted me to have all the opportunity in the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, I speak it, but I speak flu I speak dialect. Yes. Whereas my wife speaks one hundred percent fluent, formal Italian, no dialect, no you know, no calabrese. It's it's. Um, it's weird because it's when my mom, my mom, my, my mom was born here, but she didn't learn English until she was in kindergarten. Yeah. Because that's all my grandparents spoke. And I was yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And then so she never really like pushed I Italian on us. Right. So that's where like. Yeah, it's an opportunity thing. Yeah. You want you to have the, the best opportunity For possible. Sure. Sure. Now I wish I learned, I knew Italian. Mm -hmm. you know, no. I'm sorry, you know, you know, people look back now and said, you know, we should have kept the traditions. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, especially like my generation, like people are jumping onto this now, especially with right. the, like the rise of popularity. Because I see videos go viral on Instagram and TikTok now, and there's just like Italian videos from like just random people. Yeah. Like, no, there's no like angle. <coughs> there's no angle. They're just putting a video out there to be funny, and you should see the comments that people relate. Like, oh, I didn't know that happened to me. Just put the video out about eating just pastina. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I ate that every time I was sick too, and it was like that. And then we built it, like it's a nice to see. It's nice to see that, you know, not only am I finding like areas in the United States that I'm being booked for where I'm like, there's a there's a Italians there. Mm -hmm. I'm like in Michigan. It's it's nice to see that those traditions, you know, were so widespread. You know. Well, but, it's, um, it's nice to see that people are starting to appreciate. The Italian sense of humor. Yeah. And we were known for so many different things, but never for our sense of humor. No. Yeah. And no. we have a, a tremendous sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I, I just think that was something that was uh, kind of kicked to the side, yeah. you know, because of because of Hollywood, really. Yeah. You know. I mean, my dad. My dad's a he's a hothead. Like. Right. You should have, when you pulled that prank on me, he was, he was fuming for him. So I'd watch out for him later. But um, I feel like if I didn't have that sense of humor, I would go crazy and deal with him. Because yeah, you know, it's funny after the fact. Like, I'll break his balls just right. midway through him being angry. Like, I'll make fun of something he did, and then it just But he, he's 100% right. It's, it's Hollywood kind of gave everyone the stereotype or the outlook that Italians roll mafia. Yeah. You know, and, and, tough, and, and tough guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Listen, they, we do have tempers, yeah. but... My father tries now to be funny, mm -hmm. and it's painful <laughs> because I'm like, Dad, it's funny in Italian. Like he'll, but he's so random. Like he, he my my brother one year, I remember it was winter time, and all his friends are at the house, and my brother's like, Man, it's cold out. I gotta put warm boots on. And my father walks out. He goes, Oh, why? Your feet cold? And he's like, Yeah, my feet get cold. He goes, The shit inside your boots. The shit's always warm. And he laughed and walked away. And his friends are like, Did your father say you shit in your boots? And I'm like, Dad, your delivery is horrible. You yeah. look dead serious. So he tries, man, but uh, my father's the most rent. Johnny's still waiting. I can't wait for them to meet because they're going to be talking for hours. But he's heard him. He spoke to him on the phone. Yeah. My dad is, he's very unexpected. I took him to Boston, and there was these two women that approached him. And I, he goes. He said to me, he goes, if a woman come up to me, I don't know what to do. It's been a long time since your father talked to another woman. Because you know, my parents are divorced for 20 years. But he, you know, he doesn't go out there on the scene and start you know, hitting on women. Yeah. So he, I go, just be yourself. Be relaxed. He goes, yeah, just be yourself. So the woman <laughs> goes up to him and goes, how you doing? You know, your son's very funny. You know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you, you know, I got a diabetes, but I give myself the insulin every night at 10 o'clock, and I'm like, <laughs> she's yeah. walked away, and I go, you have absolutely no game, what, what the hell was that, he goes, you said to be myself, that's not telling her your life story, 
Well, it would have, if she was a diabetic, it would have been a great match. match. made in heaven. <laughs> what insulin do you use? I use the same kind. <laughs> oh, we could be insulin to France. Oh, my God. That's funny. Uh, yeah, we could wrap this up because we got to get ready to yeah, go. Yeah, sure thank you for having us. Oh, my God. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. This is fun. I can't wait for the show to start. No, no. Yeah, not a lot of old school energy out there. Just make sure it's on time because I've had people come up to that. This 80-year-old lady come up to She goes, I love you, show. I said, oh, thank you. I said, you, you found everything okay? It wasn't offensive? Offensive? No, I love when you said dick. <laughs> I said, oh, I appreciate that. She goes, one thing I don't like. I said, what didn't you like? You started the show 23 minutes away. I don't like oh, that. Man, I so said, classic. I, I, I apologize, angry little four foot Italian woman. That's funny. Yeah, it's not on time. It, it, you know, if you tell people 8 o'clock, do 8 o'clock. So they don't understand <laughs> shit. Shit happens. Yeah, you know you want shit to make Johnny passes out in the lobby. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So look at the tick. Yeah, eight. That what is that? <laughs> eight. You want to start eight thirty? Tell people, show start eight o'clock. Maybe eight thirty. <laughs> I'm like you can't. I don't think you should put that on a fire. <laughs> uh, That's right. So thank you guys. Make sure to follow <coughs> Goodbye Johnny and Anthony across all social medias as well as the Wooden Spoon. We will catch you guys later.